and 950. Okay, what expiry, uh, Brian? April 22nd on the ZS. ZS is somewhat inversely correlated, except for this huge thing over here in June of last year. Okay, so something has happened over here. I, mean, I guess it just went into a bubble area, perhaps, and boom, it just came down. So now I don't follow this. Uh, this particular instrument, but we don't need to, we don't need to regardless. So let's go take a look at these options of, uh, you know, the soybean. It's very interesting. I've never seen soybean chart before. Okay. So looks like they have pretty much monthlies or quarterlies. Okay. Right. I mean, there's no weeklies or things like that on uh, soybean. It's the May 17th. Whenever you analyze a trade, the first thing you have to understand is what, like for me, I'm looking at soybean for the first time in my life. What is it that you want to know when you look for a trade, especially with something that you you have never seen before? See, there's got to be a couple of things that you have to go for right away okay, when it's a, a new instrument. And if you don't know, yes, bid ask spread, of course, uh, is one of them. And I see that I see that the bid ask spread is pretty bad over here. So that is definitely going to be one of them. But even before you get to bid ask spread, there is something else that you have to look at. You have to understand about this particular instrument. IV, exactly. Chris said that. IV, perfect. So we need to understand what is the implied volatility of this particular instrument and what, you know, what's its basically, what's its, uh, you know, history kind of thing. So currently it seems like the implied volatility is somewhere around what is the front series? Uh, April is 17. Okay, so 18, 18, 19, 20, you know, it's going to be like that, right? So that's fine. We just need to understand that. So the first thing I would do in such a case where you have a stock that you've never seen before, but somehow, you know, whether it's news or whatever, you think there is an opportunity here, but you've never seen it before. You've never traded it before. So how would you deal with it? So the first thing I would see is implied volatility. So let's go to the charts. So what I've put here as a lower study, it can never go too wrong, but it sometimes might miss some good points. You know, that's the only problem with it. But uh, average to range is a measure of how much movement there is, which is in my mind, that is the real volatility in the market, which I know how much movement. It's not about demand for puts and all of that. If you, if, if you saw my uh, VIX post, it looks like it's volatility is coming down from this point. Yeah, I mean, oh, this is interesting. This is interesting. So you have to look for these abnormal things that you see. So for here, I mean, from here, the soybean price is just going up. Its average true range is also moving up. For our purposes, I'm going to put another study because, you know, what we want to know is its historical volatility number. ATR, I have it and I'll just pause it for now. And then we'll add the historical volatility. It's somewhat of a better calculation than I think uh, even your VIX calculations. So historical volatility is going back about 20 uh, periods here. And uh, what it does is goes back 20 periods. OK, so it's going back. Things are always per period that you're looking at. You might be looking at a five minute chart, in which case these all would be five minutes. So here we are. We have both the ATR and the historical volatility. They have almost exactly the same you know, chart right here. I mean, totally, totally correlated uh, with each other. So that tells me that there is some stability in this thing right now. OK, because when you see two or three things converging almost to the dot, uh, that's when your probability of the trade increases liquidity. Very good, Daniel. Some stability comes in there. There's no standard measure of what is a high probability trade and what is not. Just like there is no standard measure for, for knowing whether you have the edge right now or the market maker has the edge. But we can be sure that the edge always starts on their side. OK, it's not it doesn't start with us. So that we can be sure of. And therefore, you have to make every effort to try to get that back because you've already given up some edge when you enter the trade. In this case, also, you want to see a number of things confluence, uh, you know, together. Uh, if we say that uh, there is some stability, we should see some stability in the moving averages, right? I mean, because it's not going crazy. And so there should be some stability there. So moving average. So now we have the moving averages also. Sometime in April last year, uh, soybean prices really took off. Okay, so the futures went from 900 or 850 
all the way to 1200 in three months. So that's pretty intense. And so obviously historical volatility has increased. If you think of the VIX post, I don't know how many people read it. Other than stock options, these things are behaving like volatility should really behave. Look at this, you know, it's not just about the downturn. Okay. I mean, the whole fact that the VIX goes down when the market goes up and the VIX goes up when the market goes down is, is, is it's just crazy. And it certainly is no reflection of volatility. But look at this. This is very interesting. It's, it's very cool. So let's move on. So we've got a good idea now. Uh, the volatility is at somewhat of its uh, middle to lower uh, ends. We should be seeing a period of stability, notwithstanding this last few days over here. This is uh, the one thing that's uh, that's not looking good. It's at a very precarious point right now. You can see that to today's trading, the there is a green bar. And so the futures have started at least somewhat positively as far as the uh, soybean is concerned. So you're expecting a big move. Why is that? Why are you expecting a big move? I mean, don't get me wrong. The volatility is pretty low. Okay. So if you were to buy a strangle, this is the time it's at its lower end. I mean, lower range, but I just want to know what your uh, basis was for doing a strangle. Okay. Let's, you know, you, you think about it and, and let me know. Meanwhile, let's keep going because there have been other ideas also over here. 